even half of it. Um, this is just what I had in my hands at the time. Okay. Ah! It's fine. We're off to a great start here. We're off to a fantastic start. Welcome. My name is Michaela. This is Michaela Reads. I live here. If you are new. Hi. Welcome. I bought some more books. I bought quite a few more books. I wish you could see what I'm looking at right now. You will eventually, but at this minute, not just yet. So I kept trying to justify this to myself and I just, I read books as a hobby. I make videos about reading books as a hobby. Do what makes you happy, live your dreams. And that is the motto I'm living by for this video. I bought some books, I'm gonna tell you about them. Let's start with the ones I've read. That is both books that I have read since purchasing them and books I have purchased that I have already read and didn't own copies of. We have Dark Dawn by Jay Kristoff. Oh, and the inside cover's really pretty. This is book number two in the... I listened to these via audiobook. I owned the first one. I bought the third one and I found the second one. And they are all the same size. This one's not in the greatest condition, but I also don't care. This was a good series. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed listening to it. I enjoyed the main character. And I just have this completionism need to complete my collections that I have on my shelf. So this is this was a completionism purchase. I also purchased Ingo by Helen Dunmore. This is an odd purchase. This is one of the first chapter books that I borrowed from a library when I was a child that I read. I have just such vivid memories of pretending to be a mermaid <laughs> after reading this and like doing laps and laps and laps of the pool hoping that I would just like end up falling into a magic mermaid land. If that's not revealing of my personality and how books influence my personality even from a young age, I don't know what it is. And the last two unnecessary purchases, because I actually already own copies of these, the paperback versions of The Name of the Wind and The Wise Man's Fear by Patrick Rothfuss. These are two incredibly beat up paperback copies of the first edition of the books. And that is the sole reason that I purchased these, because I wanted first editions. Again, collection, completionism, not completely necessary but I did it anyway. If you don't know, The Name of the Wind is one of my favorite book series of all time. It follows a main character, Quoth. He is a child who worked in a, like a roaming carnival with his family. They were tragically killed. The story continues from there. There's an awesome science magic system. What more could you want in a high fantasy series? It's one of my favorites. Also, I keep lending out my copies of The Name of the Wind and people just stop giving them back to me. So it's always good to have backups. Moving on into the books that I have purchased recently that I have not read that I read when I purchased them. Odd categories in this video. The Mountains Echoed by Khaled Husseini. This I read as a part of the Pocket Pages book club run by Ali from Alice in Pages. I will leave her link down below. This was a beautiful story following multi-generations across the early 1900s to the early 2010s. Once again, this was a theme. In August, this story centers on essentially just a bunch of different people that all sort of stem from these two first main characters, Abdullah and Pari. If you want to know more of my thoughts, I have a wrap up here or here with my thoughts about this. So go watch that if you want to see it. But I have already read this. It was good. I then read Love on the Brain by Ali Hazelwood. This is her second book that she has written that I have read. Again, contemporary love story, science, romance, hate to love, enemies to lovers, all of the good stuff. Another reading vlog, go check it out. Then we had The House Across the Lake by Riley Sager. Again, another book that I have a reading vlog for, but that's not out yet. Just keep an eye out for it. It's coming in the next couple of weeks. I read this book. And then finally, for another video that you have not seen yet and that is not out and is actually not going to come out for quite some time at this point in time, is Uzumaki by Jonji Ito, another one that I have read. And I will leave the wrap up that I have for this in the cards. But that is the first section of this video complete. And then we move into the books that I haven't read yet and that I have tentative plans for reading. We then purchased The Broken Earth Trilogy by N.K. Jemisin and it's in a nice convenient box that I will actually be taking it out of because I hate boxes. I hate books that come in boxes because once you read them they never fit back in. So we have The Fifth Season, The Obelisk Gate and The Stone Sky, N.K. Jemisin. I did not like N.K. Jemisin's other one. The City We Became did not like that book at all. I think I lacked the necessary knowledge and nostalgia of New York for that. I thought it was a cool concept, but it, I just didn't love it as much. Um, so I'm hoping, because fantasy is much more my, you know, wheelhouse, my shtick, I'm hoping that I enjoy these more than what I enjoyed the city we became. I also purchased Jonathan Strange and Miss Cinderella by Susanna Clarke. Time and I'm assuming that means Time Magazine said, ravishing, it combines the dark mythology of fantasy with the delicious social comedy of Jane Austen into a masterpiece of a genre that rivals Tolkien, which is a big 
claim, big claim to rival Tolkien. A significant contributor to me purchasing this was the holographic bird on the front of it. Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norell follows two magicians, Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norell, in early 1800 England, as far as I know, and they're magicians and they have like a competition or like they work together and then magical hijinks ensues. I am a little bit intimidated by this one because all of my people on YouTube who like classics enjoy this and I do not like classics typically. So unsure about how this is gonna go. I'm open for new experiences. We love learning here on this channel. The next one is influenced purely by Jared. I bought this for him, but I think he wants me to read it. It's a World of Warcraft lore book. <laughs> I have never played World of Warcraft. I sort of understand the concept of World of Warcraft. I can name some of the races in World of Warcraft, but that's about it. This is an anthology of four different stories that provide some of the lore and background for World of Warcraft. This is gonna be a slow one, if at all I get to it. Okay, initially the next two I purchased for aesthetics uh, and then realized that I actually really liked them and wanted them. I bought Charlotte's Web, but like a very old copy of it. I think that this was printed in 1979 is the last date of publishing for this. So regardless, it's quite old. This is a book that I haven't read, that I feel like I'm missing a formative part of my childhood years. And it has pictures, oh my goodness. And it was only three dollars how could i say no the second aesthetic purchase i bought was this this is a dictionary of non-classical mythology this is a very old almost encyclopedia of ancient gods from different cultures and mythology from different cultures but it's genuinely so gorgeous. This is the opening pages. My understanding is that this was printed in around the 1930s, so she's old. She's nearly 100 years old. To change up the feels a bit, I purchased From Lukov with Love by Mariana Zapata. This is an ice skating romance, and if anything has been more on brand than this, I'll wait. I will be jumping into this at the soonest possible convenience because I'm running severely low on just general contemporary romances that are gonna fill me with happy, bubbly, lovely feelings. And it's coming into summer for me, so I need I need the romances, I need them to pump through because the rest of the world is currently reading Dark Academia and it does not reflect my current weather state. We also have another book that I can't tell you why I bought, but I bought Ms. Ice Sandwich by Miko Kawakami. In my understanding, a neurodivergent coded book. It follows a young boy who I believe has autism. I could be wrong, but he's obsessed with the lady at the sandwich counter at a supermarket. It's a very short story and I think it just sort of follows his interactions with her and his relationship with her and how they become friends, question mark. I don't know, I'll let you know once I've read it. Look at how beautiful this cover is. I love it so much. Then we have books one and three in the Live Ship Traders trilogy. I bought book two for this a very long time ago, purely because I liked these covers. Robin Hobb is an author that I have not read yet in my lifetime and I really want to. I really want to read through all of her work because I hear it's all fantastic. They all are linked so there kind of has to be an order to it so I won't get to these. But one thing I've learned is that I have to purchase things at op shops and like secondhand bookstores once I see them because otherwise they won't be there anymore. So when I bought number two, I was like, I just, I have to buy it because it's beautiful. The cover is fantastic. It's very similar and reminiscent of these ones. But then I had to buy these when I found them. And the lady at the store was so mad because I bought one and three and not two in the set that she had. So now she just has a random number two and everything has come full circle. My understanding of the live ship traders is that it is still a continuation of the Robin Hobb world and there are ships that are sentient. Is there anything cooler than that? Not to me anyway. Ooh, actually these are like quite erotic pictures. This is not safe for YouTube. <laughs> it is my goal maybe next year to delve into Robin Hobb. But for now, I'm just content knowing that I own a complete trilogy with covers that match. I bought two more books for book clubs, one of which I didn't read at the time that the book club was reading it because everyone who started it in the book club said that it wasn't good. It is Hotel Magnifique by Emily J. Taylor. This was meant to be for the World Booked book club run by Lacey and Sadie and I was halfway through reading And the Mountains Echoed and so it was like two days before the end of the cutoff of the live show for this book and everyone was like I hated it, it wasn't worth it and then I never picked it up. So during out as to how long this will stay on my TBR for. Place your bets of how many years it will take me to read this. <laughs> the next one I just was silly and didn't do my research before buying books. I bought The League of Gentlewomen Witches which is actually the second book 
in this series. The first of which is the one that we're reading for the book club. And so now I have the second one for when I finish the first one, but I haven't actually read the first one yet. I had to buy it on my Kobo because I couldn't find a physical copy of it. Someone who has already read this in the book club said that it was moving cities or floating cities and given that it's magical and there's witches i'm all here for it floating cities so my jam we're nearing the end there are minimal books left on my floor my only graphic novel purchase at this stage stone fruit by Li Lai. This was a recommendation from Ali from Alice and Pages as well. To be honest, I get most of my book recommendations from her at this point, and I'm totally okay with that. So this sounds as though it's going to follow this couple who take custody or are just a sanctuary for their niece. These two end up breaking up and they have to sort of navigate a world without their primary partner, person. And it says on the back that Stonefruit reveals how painful it can be to open up to your loved ones and how fulfilling it is to be finally understood for who you are. Which just sounds beautiful. Arguably the most beautiful book that I have purchased this year is Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow by Gabrielle Zevin. Can we take a minute? Take a minute for the cover. This is a friendship story that follows two friends who meet in a hospital gaming room and it follows them and their friendship throughout their lives over their entire lives, I believe. And I think it's just fraught with all of the complex ins and outs of a friendship that can happen. And I've heard that it's fantastic. There is so much hype and buzz around this. This is one that I will absolutely be reading at the first possible opportunity because how could you not? How could you not? It's so pretty. I think it has to be one of my favorite covers of books that I have ever purchased. I love rainbows. Speaking of other beautiful covers, I purchased The Lesbianas Guide to Catholic School quite a while ago and I still haven't read it and that's a crime. My understanding is that our main character has just enrolled at a Catholic school. She is not only Mexican but she is also queer and she has to navigate that along with managing relationship dramas and family dramas and all of the things that come along with being a teenager. And then lastly, probably the two books that I am the most excited for, like more than tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow. A Psalm for the Wild Build and A Prayer for the Crown Child. When I discovered that cozy fantasy was a genre, I flipped my lid. A Psalm for the Wild Build and A Prayer for the Crown Child. Like they're both small enough that they can be counted as one. Follows a monk and a robot. And as far as I know, the robot is asking the monk about the human experience. And I'm gonna butcher it, so I'm just gonna read you the blurb. One day, the life of a tea monk is upended by the arrival of a robot. There to honor the old promise of checking in, the robot has one question. What do people need? I also love Becky Chambers' writing so much. I love The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet. For that reason, I have all of the faith in Becky Chambers to write a book in the genre that is what appears to be my newfound favorite genre. But with all of that said, these are all the books that I've bought. I would say that this is the last one, but I just can't guarantee that. For now, I'm okay with that. That is a thought that I'm happy to sit with. <laughs> this is built up over a couple of months, so this is not like a very sudden influx of lots of books. But that's it. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you're having a fantastic day or night or whatever time it is where you are in the world. If you have bought any of these books, let me know. If you've read any of these books, let me know. If you've made a book haul, let me know. In that case, I will see you in the comments. If not, I will see you in the next video. Bye!